Welcome to the uh, Computer Security Seminar from uh, uh, Purdue University. Uh, our, uh, our, uh, our speaker today is uh, uh, Gary McGraw, and he will talk about uh, uh, BSIM, uh, the Building Security in uh, Maturity Model. Gary. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. So I think I am going to escape the little hole and come stand over here and give you guys the talk. So uh, BSIM is about software security. And uh, I'm coming at this problem from the commercial world um, as opposed to the academic world. Uh, and just to tell you a little bit about what I do so you know what, where this mean, what this means, I work for a company called Sigital. Uh, we have offices in New York and Boston and Amsterdam and Silicon Valley and headquarters is in um, Virginia. Got about 120 people and we work almost exclusively on software quality and software security with huge companies that do software security initiatives and have large scale software quality problems. Um, I've written a whole bunch of books in computer security over the years starting with Java security way back in 1996 if you see that one right there. Uh, and actually, I gave a talk about that book here in 98, maybe, or 97, long ago, I think, before these things were even filmed. Yep. And then I gave another talk on this one in 2001. And was that the last time I was here, Spaff? I don't know. Seems no, like. You've been here one more time in, in between. Yeah, but I don't remember exactly what it was. But, but here I am to talk about um, my latest thinking in software security. Uh, and this thinking is definitely um, biased by what actually works out there in the world. So um, I started out as an academic and I got my PhD in computer science and cognitive science down at IU Bloomington. Um, studied with Doug Hofstetter back in the day. I think I, I met you, Spaff, in 1995, something like that, when I started working in computer security for the first time. And I've really been doing computer security stuff um, ever since then. When I started in the field, uh, there were just a few people that were saying, gosh, we really have a big engineering problem and we got to build our stuff better. We have to test it appropriately. Uh, and the most famous of all of those people is sitting right here, um, who was uh, talking about building better software. But really there was not anywhere to go to talk about how to do it. Uh, we wrote this book, Building Secure Software in 99. I wrote with John Viega, who's now the the CTO of McAfee, I think, or the CSO or something. CSO, um, CSO of, of McAfee. Uh, he was my right-hand guy at Sigital for many years. And um, when we wrote that book, it was kind of a philosophy tome. It was saying, you know, software security. And the problem at that point was, if you went to the security guys and you said, what about software? They would point over there. And they would go, oh yeah, those damn software people. They keep building broken, horrible software. And they put it on our beautiful, pristine, wonderful network and screw the whole thing up. Plus the users. And they really hated the developers and the users in equal measure. And then if you went over to this side and you said, hey, developer people, security. <laughs> they would go, oh yeah, we have some people that live down in the basement. They're the gnomes. I think they do it. The security gnomes. And so everybody was pointing like this, the trolls, at, at everyone else, and nobody was responsible for the job. Uh, now, the good news is that things have changed a lot since then, and you used to have to give this talk motivating why software security is important and who ought to be doing it and what we ought to be doing. And today, I'm not going to belabor you with all that stuff. In fact, I want to start out with the first slide that, that says this. Um, and we stole a line from the Declaration of Independence up there at the top. Uh, and these are things that I sh shouldn't have to convince you of now. These, these should be just self-evident, obvious stuff. Um, the first is that software security is not about security functions. It's not about cryptography or authentication or any sort of mechanism. Mechanisms certainly play a role, but security is not a mechanism. It's not a thing. It's a property. And it turns out to be an emergent property of a whole system. Uh, kind of like quality. It would be great if you could just have a quality thing and you would check the little quality thing in a pull down menu and all of a sudden quality would be up. You know, you could do the same thing for security. Just check the little security thing and security would be on. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. As you all know, 
Many developers don't know that yet because developers have been taught for many, many years. We got any developers in, in the audience back here? No, all students, no developers? Oh, well. Developers have been taught for many decades to think in terms of features and functions because when it comes to planning a project or building an architecture, it's always described in terms of features and functions. So it's only natural to consider that developers would, when faced with security, think of security as a feature or function. It's just part of the way they think. So we still have to disavow them of that belief and get to this notion of emergent security, but I don't have to convince you guys of that, so I won't try to do so. Do so. The other thing you have to understand about software security is that problems in software come in two major varieties. One variety is bugs, that's implementation problems in code, and the other variety is flaws, that is problems in design. And both are kinds of software defect, but if you want to try to make sure that a program is defect free, you have to concentrate on both aspects of those problems. You can't just go scanning the code with a static analysis tool and try to eradicate the bugs and expect that to lead to security because then you're going to end up having lots of architectural issues. So that's another thing that I think the world understands at this point and they generally speaking appear to be divided up about 50-50. And then the last thing um, which is something that's pretty new, you know, the last five years or so, is that if you want to do software security, if you want to practice software security as a developer or as a corporation um, or as any sort of entity, the way to do it is to integrate practices into the software development life cycle. Now, this should be pretty obvious. I mean, it, that's why it's, we hold these truths to be self-evident. So there are a lot of, of, of different methodologies for doing this. There's Microsoft's SDL methodology, there's OWASP CLASP, there's My Touchpoint stuff. There are many ways of doing it. PwC has one, Deloitte has one. Everybody has a way of talking about integrating security practices into the software development life cycle. So those are the things that we're starting with and let's move on from there. You know, in fact, that's kind of the state of the practice around 2006. Um, this book, Software Security, that I wrote came out, and six months later, um, Steve and Mike Howard wrote the SDL book, and um, OWASP came out around the same time. And basically, if you stand back and squint, this work looks very similar because it says you should do things like review your code with a static analysis tool. You should do architectural risk analysis. Gosh, penetration testing is a good idea. But you should also do security testing um, at the unit level and the integration level. And you know, these, these notions of stuff you ought to do in the SDLC, that is fairly well understood um, philosophy now. But if you think about it, where did this come from? Well, it turns out it came from thin air. <laughs> and it was based on what I like to call faith-based software security. So there were various people that were running around promulgating different faiths, you know, the popes of the, the different religions. And, and, uh, and faith-based software security, generally speaking, works okay, but, the, but it's just based on faith and personality and convincing people that that's the way they ought to do it. And, you know, I stand guilty of being um, one of the promulgators of faith-based software security. But uh, we don't have to do that anymore. And, in fact, what happened to me was I was at a technical advisory board meeting a couple years ago at Fortify. And yet another software security religion was presented. Um, it was going to be the way these guys say you should do software security. Another faith-based approach. This is how you should do it. And I looked at it, it was a very cool thing actually, it was a, a nice little model built by Praveer Chandra and, and it was a, an interesting model. But the problem was, when I looked at it I said, you know, I've done seven large scale software security initiatives and none of them did it this way. So in theory you could do it that way, but nobody has done it that way in my own experience. So I said, well, have you guys actually done it? Oh, no, 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 it's faith based software security. And the, the sort of obvious thought is, 